Hi, it's Sarah from World War Knits, and today I'm making a video about the story of Rin Tin Tin. I made some little yarn dolls called Rin Tin Tin and Nanette, and one of my customers wondered where the story came from, and it actually is from this book, Rin Tin Tin, The Life and the Legend by Susan Orlean. I bought this book several years ago, and uh, there's a story in it about these little yarn dolls and I'll insert a picture of the ones that I've made. This book is about the real dog Rin Tin Tin during World War I. He was born in 1918 and he was found as a puppy by a man named Lee Duncan, and so this is the story of Lee Duncan. It begins on a battlefield in France during World War I when a young American soldier, Lee Duncan, discovered a newborn German shepherd in the ruins of a bombed out dog kennel. To Duncan, who came of age in an orphanage, the dog's survival was a miracle. He saw something in Rin Tin Tin that he felt compelled to share with the world. So it is a really good World War I story, and I really enjoyed reading it. He was trying to think of a name for the German Shepherd puppy that he found, and this is where he got the idea. From the moment he found these puppies, Lee considered himself a lucky man. He believed he was lucky despite the absence of his father, the rock-ribbed loneliness of his childhood, the tough years in the orphanage, the adored pets lost to him. For the rest of his life, he marveled at his good fortune in finding the puppies turning the story over and over again like a shiny stone, watching it catch the light. He thought about that luck when it came to naming the puppies. At that time, the most popular good luck charm was a pair of dolls, a boy and a girl, made of yarn or silk, about as long as a finger, crude as stick figures, with a dab for a nose, a dash for a mouth, shapeless little arms and legs, and sad eyes like periods made by the point of a pencil over which the writer had paused sorrowfully, according to one soldier. The dolls were named Rin Tin Tin and Nanette, in honor of a pair of young lovers who had survived a bombing in a Parisian railway station at the start of the war. They were lucky and would bring luck, as an ad for the dolls proclaimed. Avec nous rien à craindre, with us you have nothing to fear. Nanette was a common girl's name, but the boy's name Rin Tin Tin was unusual. No one could even settle on how to spell or punctuate it. Sometimes it was Rin Tin Tin, all one word, sometimes Rin Tin Tin, and sometimes even Ran Tan Tan, and no one could explain where it originated. It didn't seem to be a diminutive, because no proper name came close to sounding like Rin Tin Tin. It was less like a name than a tongue-clicking sound, a rhythm, perhaps even the chorus of a children's song, Rin Tin Tin, Rin Tin Tin, Rin Tin Tin. Many French girls made the Rin Tin Tin and Nanette dolls by hand and gave them away, and at least one French charity sold them to raise money for an orphanage. American soldiers became eager customers. Everyone in Lee's squadron carried a rabbit's foot or painted a lucky insignia on their plane or had a girl's name scrawled on the interior of the cockpit. When Rin Tin Tin and Nanette dolls became a fad, soldiers began to wear them on chains around their necks or dangle them from their gun barrels or helmets. Lee had bought his Rin Tin Tin and Nanette charms from a little girl in Toll, and he wore them for the rest of his life. The lucky puppies, he decided, would be given these lucky names, Rin Tin Tin and Nanette. And then it goes on to talking about the war and the flu epidemic, so it's a, a very interesting story and has a lot of World War I history, so I would recommend it for that. And also the true story of Rin Tin Tin is really touching and Lee Duncan, how much he loved that dog. And that's the background on the, the yarn dolls that I made that the customer had wondered about. So take care everybody.